and welcome to Real People, Real Voices. I'm James Jackson. And I'm Pastor Wayne Moore. Always a pleasure to host with you. It is, man. Tell us who our sponsors are. Well, we got Tomiko and Associates Realty Group, Martin University, Marion County Public Health Department, Owls Modern Clothing and Shoes, His Place Eatery, North Side Window and Gutter Cleaning, and Lee Castle and Crawley. And Fervent Care Christian Academy. If you need your child to get a good, solid start, please take them to Fervent Care Christian Academy. Well done. Yeah. And we want to encourage you, it's uh, talking about taking you somewhere. We want to take you to the WHMB TV 40 yeah. um, on YouTube. And please be sure to subscribe and click the notification bell. And yeah, like us on Facebook. <laughs> like, us on Facebook. <laughs> yeah, like us on Facebook. We're there <laughs> waiting on you to hit the button and, and let us into your life and into your family. So. Yeah. We've got a great show. Um, Mr. Torin Everett's going to be joining us here in just yes, a moment. Yes. MD Wise. Yeah, yeah, that's going to be something people really need to, to listen to. Very important. And, and, and understand what he's talking about because most people don't know about MD Wise. Yeah. And one of the things we're going to be talking about is vaccinations. Yes, which is. Some 100 million Americans yeah. have opted out so yeah. far. Uh, only 166,000 million, I'm sorry, mm -hmm. 166 million. Um, I'm going to say it when others will not say it. Uh, those who made the sacrifice to get vaccinated are now being uh, challenged by the non-vaccinated. Yeah. So we just got to talk about it just the way it is. Yeah. And, um, and there's a lot of misinformation out there too. Yeah, Mark of, of the bees, yeah. uh, government tracking you. Yeah. I guess the government, if you want to track it, is tracking your cell phone. Yeah, well, definitely right. Don't even put anything in you. Yeah. We'll, we'll be back to talk more about that in just a few moments after these messages. Welcome back, and we're joined by Mr. Torian Everett, and he is the Vice President of Health Plan Operations over at MDWise. Yes, sir. Interesting name for a company. What is MDWise? So MDWise is a managed care organization and insurance company that serves over 300,000 Hoosiers that are on Medicaid. Uh, we, we focus on uh, serving children, pregnant women, and then also uh, those that are age 19 through 64 uh, with providing them insurance coverage as well. Wow. Thank God that we were able to overcome that insurance crisis we had a few uh, months back. You remember that crisis, don't you? Yes, sir. So uh, throughout um, the, this time where folks have uh, needed insurance and things like that during this pandemic, mm -hmm. we've actually seen a lot of membership growth really? um, just from additional individuals learning about uh, being able to apply for Medicaid and seek approval and get um, access to health care. Wow. Uh, social determinants of health. Yes, what, what's that mean? Yeah, well, let's talk about That's that. a good term. So, <laughs> so social determinants of health, um, they, they kind of break into to about five different categories. Uh, one of them that we really focus a lot of attention and effort around is working to ensure equitable health care. Now, we could talk all day about uh, equitable health care, um, but a part of what, I, uh, what we're really focusing on right now is uh, taking care to people and meeting them where they are. Um, and so I'll be able to share a little bit more about what we're doing on that front uh, shortly. Um, but also education, uh, financial makeup where you work, you live, um, and then also your, your social and your community resources that are available to you. Uh, those all pl uh, are factors that, that play into you having access to health care. And so we, we take it very seriously in that it's our job to be responsible for ensuring that we're, we're trying to bridge that gap as much as possible for all Hoosiers and not just MD-wise members. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Premium-wise, 
uh, how do you uh, help uh, your customers, your consumers? Yeah, so premium-wise, there are a couple of different uh, programs that fall under the uh, Indiana um, Healthy Indiana Plan. Right. And the, uh, Which Hoosier. we almost lost. Yeah. <laughs> yes. Um, as well as under uh, Hoosier Health-wise. So there are a few different uh, options. Um, well, when it comes to the premiums that folks need to contribute, during the public health emergency, those contributions have actually been frozen, where people have not been required to make those contributions and waiving co-pays and things like that. However, post public health emergency, um, we, we actually have a rewards program where if you get needed care and needed services and things like that, such as going for your annual physical, you can actually uh, receive reward points that you can then allocate to pay for your premium um, and co-pays and things like that to help you. And how are you guys doing with uh, pre-existing conditions? If folks have some issues coming to you, do you have any since you're partnering with the state in a lot of different ways. Yes. And we have a lot of core morbidities, yes. um, particularly in the black community. How are you guys combat combating those issues? Yes, so uh, that's a great question. So um, we're, we're having several different programs. Some of them relate to care management, where when a person comes in, if they need care um, coordination services between a specialist for a particular uh, health issue and, and need that, extra attention to get healthy. Uh, we have programs that are designed for that. Um, then beyond that, we have we just launched a, uh, a new program about uh, a month ago now. Uh, and it's a, you can go on our website it's, uh, to access the program, gethelp.mdwise.org. And that's actually a platform that we have open to the public right now where you can actually put in your zip code and search for different resources that you need, uh, housing assistance with rent, utilities, uh, uh, education completion, rather it's a GED program or things like that, um, that we do have available to help those that have uh, challenges from those social determinants, challenges from those pre-existing conditions where they just need a little help. We have those different programs that are available to them. That's great. And how is MD Wise committed to health and safety for all Hoosiers? So uh, MD Wise, we're, we're focused on uh, vaccinations at the moment. B yes, we do the everyday health assessments and, and getting the care that you need and the, the appropriate care. However, when we look at vaccinations, um, in the community, especially those that are on the Medicaid programs, they are just uh, far behind those that are in another financial class. Um, but particularly when we look at the uh, black and indigenous people of color, we and uh, people of color rather, we are just disproportionately further behind others. And so when MDYs looks at the vaccination issue, we're like, we need to go and meet people where they are. And so to do that, you have to uh, uh, make sure that you understand what the needs are of the population, partner with people that the community trusts and that they're familiar with. And so with that, we're actually going to host a vaccination clinic, one of, one of many to come, a vaccination clinic uh, in partnership with Super Shots over in Allen County um, on August 28th and August 29th. And we will have the COVID vaccine available. We will have uh, shots for kids available to get the children back on track with their childhood immunizations uh, as f schools are resuming in-person sessions and things like that. Um, there are only about 26% of children across the state of Indiana that are behind on their vaccines. So we've partnered with the Indiana Department of Health. We're working with the local health departments in the various communities all to ensure that we're meeting people where they are and coming to the community to um, help them to get back on track with the vaccines for the children, as well as to prov uh, provide the COVID vaccine to them as well, if they uh, would like the COVID vaccine. Tell me about what are you doing for seniors who have not been vaccinated? They can't get to a place of vaccination. 
So what are you doing? What do you offer communities? So we are, that's another great question. Um, this is a great show. Yes, sir. Yes, sir. <laughs> so um, one of the things that we're working with, right, uh, working to do right now is actually to get an agreement going with uh, a, a paramedic company. So it's something that's in process right now so that we can actually go out in the field and go to folks' houses and to the nursing homes and things like that to actually be able to provide them the uh, vaccines. That's going to be tremendously good uh, for seniors. Yes, sir. Um, we're, we're, we're terribly behind as it relates to that. We'll talk about that. Uh, Brother Jackson will take us out. Yeah, we got to take a quick break. And um, off air, we talked about how far behind we are. We'll talk about that in importance of folks getting vaccinated. So stay with us, we got much more. We'll be back after this. back to Real People, Real Voices, and we're joined by Mr. Torian Everett, and we're talking about the different things that MD Wise is doing to help keep us all safe to the best of their ability. One thing, uh, we, and Dr. Moore talked about the vaccinations, we'll continue to talk about that. You mentioned in the first segment about children who are behind on their immunizations. Yes. And of course, we are seeing thousands of children across America now contracting COVID-19, which was something that um, epidemiologists and healthcare folks were not seeing that before, and now we're seeing it. Uh, the fact that children are behind on their immunizations, does this make them more susceptible and quite possibly contributing to these uh, COVID infections? So actually, with them, with them being behind, it does make them uh, susceptible to other diseases and things like that, and also to when we talk about childhood immunizations and where they're behind, if you have a, a, a child who did not get the measles immunization, for example, to have measles and have COVID on top of that, that's not a good situation. <laughs> Um, and so as we talk about- Because your immune system is fighting on two fronts. Your immune system is already compromised. Yeah. Now you're adding COVID on top of it, which when we look at the children resuming in-person school and even hybrid uh, in-person school going a couple days a week, you're putting other children at risk as well for uh, contracting these different diseases and things like that. And so- we're really trying to work to get these kids back on track with those immunizations. Wow, that, that's going to be a, a, a difficult task. Yeah. Yes, especially, sir. Especially uh, as we battle COVID and then the, the new Delta variants and then the Lambda variants coming behind that. Um, um, I think people have played with their lives long enough. Um, I think the, uh, the messaging uh, that was given some two, three, two years, well, about a year and a half ago. I think people have discovered now that this messaging has uh, proven to be uh, inaccurate. Mm -hmm. uh, we were told children, because of their immune system, could not get COVID-19. Mm -hmm. But now, uh, here in Indianapolis, uh, just in the few moments of school being in session, we have uh, over 350 children already infected. Um, and so what I'm saying in that particular situation is, you got your hands full. Yes, sir. You got, yes, you, I mean, you got your hands full, and and um, um, and, and and people are are who are vaccinated are being uh, um, challenged with COVID nineteen because of the un the non vaccinated. Yes. And um, uh, do you have any data, any numbers that talk about the non vaccinated in Indiana? Artist? I do not have that statistic with me. Um, but we do know that uh, for the the people who are on Medicaid, though, mm -hmm. in the state of Indiana, only 22% of those Hoosiers are currently fully vaccinated. With These the are COVID seniors vaccine. you're talking about, Medicaid patients. Oh, it's uh, wide racial children, okay, adults, right. seniors. 22%. Uh, 
22% as of, uh, I believe it was as of last week's data refresh, only 22% of the Medicaid population, which is a few million people in Indiana, are only, only 22% of them are fully vaccinated. And so a lot of it has been because of vaccination hesitancy and misinformation or you know, social media or word of mouth or things like that. And so a part of MDY's trying to do their part to help educate people to get them to hope to make informed decisions. Um, we, we've we're doing these different webinars and and things like that to with experts to uh, accept questions and 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 have the experts provide answers to the attendees. And so back in April, we held our first webinar. Uh, it was a Take the Fight to COVID webinar where we actually partnered with the Marion County Public Health Department. Dr. Virginia Kane was on that panel. Um, and we had uh, Eskenazi representation on that panel. And uh, we, we just took live questions from people who attended mm -hmm. to, to try to dispel the myths and uh, uh, just answer whatever their concerns were that was preventing them from getting the COVID vaccine. So you will agree with me, Mr. Everett, that the messaging is wounded. Yes, sir. Oh, it, it is, yes, wounded to, to say the least. Yeah. Um, from the, the it, I think a lot of it goes back to social media commercials, word of mouth, um, and just when we talk about minorities and, and, and black people in particular, the history of um, where there are just people who don't trust vaccines and you know things like that has just really spilled over into this COVID pandemic. Because of the Tuskegee situation. Yes, sir. Um, that's part of it. Yes. Uh, but um, um, when we talk about you know, black population, that was mis being misinformed in the very beginning. Yes. Uh, so um, uh, now people are waking up and all ethnic groups are being touched yes. immensely by this yes. uh, because um, it was uh, navigated that it was uh, black and brown people who were suffering the most. That was never true. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. That was never true. What was true is that people were suffering the most. Right. And it was from all, whether it be Hispanic, black, white, uh, uh, Asian, et cetera, all, the, the, the whole population, no matter what the data and percentage was of each ethnic background, was touched by COVID-19. Yes. And, and, and a lot of people bought into that because they thought it was another black disease. Yes. I don't know if you agree with that, but they did with that. Yeah. And, and we're just seeing it each and every day where there are just more and more people who are, are being diagnosed with having COVID. And, and we're seeing the, the numbers tick back up of, of hospital admissions uh, and, and people dying from it. And, um, you know, now some of what I have seen on social media are people who are actually crying out for others to get vaccinated. Right. Right now, you hear right that. now, you know, but now they're crying out now right. that they've lost a loved one right. to this. Well, uh, within the last four weeks, 100, 107,000, 18 more hundred deaths right here in Indiana alone. So the numbers are ticking and Delta is more aggressive and um, than COVID could ever be. I'm pretty sure you know about that. Yes, sir. Yes, sir. You know, and so when we talk about educating people and things like that, this webinar that we have coming up. Talk about it. Um, so on uh, August 25th at 7 p.m., we will have a panel of experts to talk about the importance of vaccinations and take questions from the viewers. And if anyone is interested in, in uh, participating in this uh, webinar, they can go to www.mdwise.org forward slash back on track to learn more information about uh, that webinar and how to participate in it. We will post the information on it. It'll be uh, streamed right on Zoom, Facebook Live, um, as well as we'll have it posted online so that people can play back and watch it at a later time as well. Um, so that we, we just are focused on Hoosiers staying healthy. 
That's what it boils down to, um, is, is what can we do to do our part to have Hoosier stay healthy? Um, and we combat this pandemic. And then the other part of, that we're uh, doing is on August 28th and, and 29th, um, we're hosting our first of several back on track uh, immunization events where again, uh, I know I mentioned earlier where we will have the COVID vaccine available as well as those uh, shots for the kids uh, to get them uh, caught up. We're making it a fun day to get the families to come out. We'll have bounce houses, food giveaways, uh, gift card raffles every 30 minutes, uh, and just a whole host of things uh, to, to really- To heal the community. Yes, sir. Heal the community, have fun, and spend a little quality time together with the family. Well, you've been a great guest. Thank you so much. Thank you. And we'll be back after this. Welcome back to Real People, Real Voices. I'm James Jackson. And I'm Pastor Wayne Moore. And I'm Curtis Baker, your producer of Real People, Real Voices. Well, well great show with M.D. Wise. Oh, man. I thought it was a phenomenal show. I think uh, M.D. Wise ought to do something to be more active in this uh, marketing piece right here on Real People, Real Voices because his information is so pertinent uh -huh. about uh, the vaccine and, and being vaccinated and uh, reaching a, a certain population, children and, and seniors, the Medicaid issue. Uh, I thought that was phenomenal. Yeah. This is a bone the dog cannot let go of right now. This, this COVID and this new Delta variant and the new one that's coming, this is too vital for us to let up off the gas right now. This information needs to be put out as much often as we possibly can. Mm -hmm. But... Uh, I, I'd be a minute, I'd, I'd make sure I want to get these sponsors. Yeah, so right here. Yeah. Um, Tomiko Realty Group, uh, so Tomiko Associates Realty Group, let me make the associates in there, uh, Martin University, Marion County Public Health Department, Northside Window and Gutter Cleaning, Lee Castle and Crawley, our uh, Owls Modern Clothing and Shoes, His Place Eatery, and Fervent Care Christian <clears throat> Academy. Yeah. Fine, fine. Academy. Wonderful cadre. Tell your aunt support. Said, tell, tell your auntie hello, please. You know what? And she says hello to you guys. Does she? You know, I'm nice. actually going to, what I'm going to do, I'm trying to get to Kokomo soon and get her a cup and have her take a picture of it. And send it back. And send it back okay. so we can actually see what my Aunt Jeanette looks like. Yeah. Hi, Aunt Jeanette. <laughs> Hi, Aunt Jeanette. We need to do like Smuckers used to do, you know? Yeah. Uh, yeah. <laughs> Yeah, we have a senior citizen every show yeah. and uh, have them with a cup in their hand. Yeah, about we should real do that. Report. Yeah, that'd just, be fun. That'd be fun, wouldn't it? <laughs> Thank you for joining us, and we'll see you next time.